大家好，我是 All Branch Style。Firstly, thank you very much for all your feedback and your interest in training up and doing your first chin up. It seems like from the comments that a lot of you are interested in knowing more of the details in training up and doing your first chin up. From over two decades of training people, I would have to say that less than half of all the men and less than 10% of all the women I've trained are actually able to do their own chin up. And this includes the time when I was leading my own dragon boat team in university. Some people have a harder time than others due to their body type. As you may know, some people are thick boned, they have a stockier build, whereas others are light for their strength and size. Needless to say, doing a chin up is actually much easier for the latter, whereas the former might have an advantage if they're doing an arm wrestle, for example. So there is no single best body type, just one better suited for a particular activity. Having said that, building muscular strength in the back muscles and the arms is something any body type can accomplish. And to do that, you simply apply the same protocol for building muscular strength like in any other muscle group. If you haven't watched my first video on how I'm training up my wife to doing her first chin up, then I'll explain it here why we decide to use the chin up grip or the supinated grip versus the pronated or the pull up grip. The two reasons why we focus on doing the chin ups and not the pull ups is not simply due to preference. It's because doing the chin up actually requires more muscle mass activation than the pull up grip, and that actually will help you to do more work and also will help you to pull up your body weight in return. The supinated grip. Actually, involves more bicep activation. As you can see, as I supinate my wrist, my biceps contract. And when you keep the humerus, your upper arm, adducted close to the body, it actually activates more of your upper pec and your triceps. The chin up grip also means that your humerus is not abducted and externally rotated, which actually causes a lot of stress on the acromion. And so this is going to be important for shoulder health. Okay, first the basics. There are three main goals that we're trying to accomplish here. Number one is training up your grip strength or your hand resilience. Number two is your shoulder integrity. And number three is your core stability. Grab the bar in a supinated grip with your thumbs on the opposite side of your fingers, just within your shoulder width. And just hang on for 90 seconds or for as long as you can. Work up to 90 seconds if you can't hang on for that long. This should be your first milestone. If you have resistance bands as a training tool, then you should use them. And the first thing you should do is you should make sure that you have the proper stepping aid so that you can get up to the bar safely and easily. Grip the bar, then slide one foot into the band, and then slide your second foot into the band. From a fully stretched out position, slowly pull yourself up to the bar with your chin passing the bar, and then crunch forward slightly so that you can activate the abs even more. Slowly reverse direction and gently lower the body back into the starting position. Use the thickest band first. If you cannot even do six reps with the thickest band, then you should double it up with the next thinnest band. If that is still insufficient, you should be adding more bands to it to make it easier. And if even then it's still not good enough, then you should go back to the basics and work on your grip strength in order to build up your strength into using all the bands combined together. Once you can complete 13 reps, And doing so in a not too fast manner, then that working set should fall within the 30 to 90 second time under tension window. You can then move up to the next thinner band and you can continue to progress up until there are no more thinner bands to use. And then you can attempt to do your first unassisted chin up. If you have access to a lat pull down machine, then that will make training up even easier. Like training any other muscle on a machine, First, pick a conservative weight on the stack so that you can determine a benchmark. Set the seat and thigh pad so that your butt is fully anchored on the seat and that you should not be able to lift yourself off the seat. While standing, grab the chin up bar and sit down with it, anchoring your thigh under the thigh pads and so that you are fully anchored onto the seat. Pull down the bar gently and slowly so that it reaches your collarbone. And then, as you do, reverse direction slowly and gradually, returning back to the starting position in a fully straightened out position without your butt leaving the seat. One rep of pulling down the bar and slowly returning the bar back to the starting position should take four seconds to complete. Don't use your upper body to yank down on the bar and swing and use momentum because that's actually cheating. If you can do 13 reps in a slow and controlled manner with full range of motion, then you can actually attempt to do another set. At a next level of higher resistance. Keep using this protocol, improving in your strength and resistance until you can finally lift 75% of your body weight for 13 reps. Of course, the stacks and the, the numbers on the stack might not calibrate properly to your body weight, but assuming that it is accurate, then that is the target you should be achieving. There are four main principles now that you need to consider for any muscular strength development. And so the first one is time under tension, or TUT. The 30 seconds to 90 second window is the optimal time under time under tension for a muscle to grow. So your working set should not be so heavy that you cannot even last for 30 seconds. 
and conversely, it should not be so light that you can keep going past 90 seconds. Find a weight that can allow you to reach muscular failure or something close to it within that 30 to 90 second window. Number two is momentary muscular failure. As mentioned in the above point, you want to push the muscles to the point where you can no longer do any more reps. This is also called intensity and is the crucial ingredient for stimulating your muscles to grow. Number three is training frequency. This one is quite personal as you'll find some people who actually don't require a lot of stimulation for their muscles to grow while others do. You don't have to reach complete muscular failure. If you just reach to one or two reps shy of your muscular failure, then that is also good enough. There is a wide range for this, so it's important for you to re exercise regularly and consistently so that you know your body best and how it responds to training frequency. Rest and recovery is number four, and this is very similar to training frequency, it's just the other side of the coin. When you're not training, you're resting, and it is during these periods that your body is actually laying down the proteins, the blood vessels and nerves during your muscle tissue synthesis. So you don't want to interrupt this building process by ripping it up again in the gym. Again, this is quite personal, so it will be reflected in your training frequency. Although the statistics that I quote to you in the beginning of this video isn't very encouraging, know that all human bodies are fully capable of doing a chin-up, especially if you just build up the muscular strength that you need. It's not an easy fitness goal to obtain, but I'm 100% sure that you can achieve this if you really wanted to. You just have to follow the protocol I've outlined in this video, and you can also follow the other videos I've posted on losing any excess weight that you may be carrying, which will make things even easier for you. And if you do end up doing a chin-up, consider yourself on the fitter side of the human species. If you post a photo of your chin-ups in the comment section down below, like Did I say that right? I'll see you next time.